Hello, I'm Entrance, and welcome back, of course, to Aurora 4X, where we are playing some lovely 4X space game fun. Uh, of course, it's uh, Dwarf Fortress in space, so it's a little bit interesting. And by that, I mean complicated and difficult. So, um, the Discord has been talking. They've been talking about the integration that we've got going on, that they're, they're voting for politics and laws, etc. And one of the things that came up was that Nathan Chandler, our 65% construction production research scientist, should definitely get an award. And they said that they that he should get like the highest award possible. I'm gonna temper that slightly. I don't think the highest award possible is something that we should give out very often. I think that we should give that out very rarely. But Nathan Chandler has definitely deserved a few awards for that. So what we will do is, as you can see here, I've already opened the medals. You can get to that from create medal and then you can like New, and then select a medal, etc., and enter the data. Uh, promotion value, that basically is like, how much does it add to their possibility of being promoted? The promotion bands tend to be at just over a thousand, so it's like every thousand and a bit you get promoted. It varies depending on what rank scheme you have. Um, so I've got stuff like the Commonwealth Medal of uh, Valor, which is a military medal for 700. Kind of like our equivalent of the Victoria Cross. Uh, Listen Imperial Cross. Distinguished Service Medal. And then we've got Order of the Listen Empire, which is our civilian version of the uh, Medal of Valor. Then the Star of Merit, uh, Humanity Service Medal, and ignore this. I accidentally created a new medal. You can't delete them. Don't do this. I put it at minus 5,000 to remind myself. And then a Letter of Merit. Basically, a Letter of Merit is going to be like a really cheap, like, you know, people get this if they've just generally been good. Uh, what we'll do is we'll close that now. And we will find Nathan Chandler, leading scientist. Nathan Chandler, A8. Damn. Are uh, we going to a water medal? Um, please select a medal to award. Oh, maybe I need to hide this and then reopen it. Leading scientist, Nathan Chandler, award medal. There we go. Um, oh god, it's changed the order. It's changed the order. It's the Order of the Listening Empire is the highest one there. We don't want to give the Order of the Listening Empire, though. We want to give the Start of Merit probably a Humanity Service Medal as well. Yeah. So Star of Merit. And a Humanity Service Medal. There we go. Definitely deserved. Did anyone else deserve anything like that? Everyone else is like 25%. We've got a 35 there on defensive, but everyone else was pretty trash. Actually, our research bonuses are really bad. I uh, just so bad. They're really bad. Wow. Okay. Um do 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 do. Close that down. And we will just pop over here because we actually need to stoot, stoot, stoot. Uh, we need to start producing med, uh, not metals. I was going to say metal, missiles. We need to start producing missiles because we need to start producing some Eagle Mark IIs for our new military ships and some anti-missile missiles. So what we're going to do is we're going to produce like uh, 3,000 of these. They're, they're terrible. Maybe we should just produce 2,000, just the minimum. Uh, and we'll produce this with, say, 50% of our production. And then we'll produce a thousand of these with the other 50%. And the sparrows will be done way ahead of time because they're a sixth of the size. Fair enough. We'll make you 30%. Make you 70. That still won't be enough. Yeah, still two year difference. 20%. Too much. You know, I don't mind you being done slightly sooner with the anti-missile missiles. That's more defensive anyway. Okay. And we will close that. Now, it has also been suggested that we find our first Imperial Ministers and we give them some sort of award. So, Ice Lord Cryo uh, deserves some sort of award for becoming, you know, leader of the uh, civilization. And I think the general award we'll give them 
is uh humanity services medal and then governor of earth is who's governor of earth I forgot who's governor of the earth. I forget. Oh, location earth, but assignment unassigned. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, and I saw Crow actually didn't get the medal. Why is the metal not going on? Medals awarded. Award medal. Humanity service medal. Make award. Ah, I was clicking a sign. I actually clicked a sign there and I'm pretty sure you're meant to be on Earth and I just assigned you. Yeah, I assigned you accidentally somewhere else. There we go, I assigned to Governor of Cavallon by mistake. You're actually meant to be on Earth. There we go. Governor of Earth. Shipbuilding, factory bonus, mining bonus. Right, let's hide metals and let's actually have a look again. See if we can find ourselves a factory production bonus person. 15%. That's pretty trash. Yeah, we need a better person to go to Earth. Oh well. Accidentally temporarily sent to an outer planet. It happens. With that done, uh, I think we're good to auto turn. You know, whoops, accidentally you send someone to an outer planet, it happens, you know, mistakes are made, everybody cries, it's awful. These things happen. Maybe just wear them for like a conference. Maybe they just had a conference. Or maybe it was like a retreat or something. Um. And it would set up all five of your special orders. Yeah, but you should still have, like, yeah, three. This is one of the reasons I don't like setting these up. Because in between episodes, I set them up so that instead of doing their survey a body, survey a location, they survey three locations, they survey five bodies. They start complaining incessantly when they don't have enough. Okay, retooled for the bring it all back. Right, let's start bringing it all back. Um, here we go. So we would like to build a bring it all back CC, which is our, these are our point defense, yeah. That's the point defense leader. So that's gonna be the bring it all back. And then, for the rest of them, we are going to have the Don't Stop Moving the Reach the S Club Party And last but not least, the never had a dream come true. Uh, I think that's good, right. Everyone else is good. We've got 30 days. There we go, right in the childhood, as Twitch chat is currently saying to me. 
So, you know, your regular reminder that these are streamed live while I record. Oh, hello. Who are you? Got a civilian ship that's going and doing quite large uh, trips here. Mm. It's not sensor on to look at. Contacts. It's a freighter. Moving to Mars trade location. Okay. Supply of tritanium. Oh, running out of minerals way too quick for my liking. Uh, other than that, fine. Should be building more Ruon class. Are we building more Ruon class? Maybe we should build more Ruons. I don't think we need to, though. Got quite a few Ruons. And they're busy doing... Maybe we, maybe we do need more Ruons. Calais, the Ruon, the Toulouse. I thought we built more of them. Did we not build more? Hmm. Yeah, I think we'll build some more French cities. So we'll need a list of French cities. Luckily, I have Google. So I've already done past, uh, Paris, we've done Marseille, we've done Lyon. Have we done Bordeaux? I don't think we've done Bordeaux. Marseille, Paris, Versailles. Calais, Rouen, Toulouse. Yeah, so we haven't done Bordeaux. Bordeaux. Is that right? That is right. Uh, Strasbourg. And Nice, which I'm going to definitely pronounce as nice from now on. And yes, I would normally ask Twitch chat for these list of um, cities and stuff, but I always have to double check Twitch chat spelling anyway. <laughs> so uh, normally I will ask and get opinions from Twitch chat on which cities to go for, but I would still have to double check them. In this case, I was just like, you know, French cities, I'm happy to pull off a list. Um, new jump point found, that doesn't really matter to us. We're not gonna explore them until we're done anyway. Yeah, yeah, I can't do all of its jump point stuff, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. All that good, can't set up all of its jump points. Excellent, we've done research rate 400 RP. Sweet. And Nathan Chan is still going strong. I'm so tempted just to go, screw it, let's go 500 RP. But I think we'd be better off for now picking something like a 30% time cost saving on ships or something like that, you know. Something that we can get our teeth into. Uh, construction rate, 25 is also tempting, but I think we'll just go for the saving and cost on ships, because that's what we're doing right now. Crack that out. And keep going. Just because I think that's a pretty solid choice. Your construction production stuff is always a solid choice, really. Like, it will help you in general. 
spare research lab. Um, there you go. Chuck it on terraforming rate. It won't help you for, you know, getting a military ship out now, but it will mean that you can get stuff out faster in the future. You can research it faster in the future. You can build it faster. You can build more missiles faster. Whatever it is you want to do. Construction production has pretty much got you covered. And I think, unless something, like, urgently important happens. We've done terraforming rate. Okay. What do we want to do? Probably just do a bit more terraforming stuff. Like, try and get that up nice and high. I don't mind if it's going to take a few years. Maybe take, you know... A few of you. Because we can cut that massively by using a few. There we go. One, two. One, two, three, four. Dear God, that's going to be finished this year. That's going to be finished in a month. That's crazy talk. That's just crazy talk. Damn. Nathan Chandler is so good. 65%. Remember when you're working on a technology that matches their focus? That's four times. Dear Lord. That's that's crazy powerful. Uh right. But little more ruins? Everyone else is busy? Yeah? Everything's going fine. So what I will probably do is I'm probably just going to cut through the YouTube video here and we'll come back when something happens. Because I think this is the point where we're just going to start pushing onwards. Uh, we'll start pushing on to Kavalan, trying to get the system there. Because uh, we've started to put people over there. We've started to get infrastructure. And we'll also try and push on and generally spread out and get a little bit more secure. We also still need to continue building our military. But that's just going to be time. I don't think there's anything that's revolutionary. If anything revolutionary happens, I'll come back to you. But we're going to skip ahead and for the magic of editing... Okay, so uh, we seem to have encountered a new planet. In, in fact, an entire new system. The Struv system, which we'll put up here. Uh, we will line up the same position. So that's up there. It's actually a binary. So you can see here that we've got the main star, and up here we've got the B component. And that is... Oh dear, that's 8 billion kilometers away. Remember most of our commercial ships have 20 billion kilometers of range? That's there and back. 1.25 times. That's that's bad. That's a long way away. Uh, however, if we pull this up, you'll notice that we have the A component actually has a terraformable planet. Gravity's a little bit low, but it's terraformable. It doesn't have an atmosphere at the moment. And if we look at the B component, we've got three things there that are terraformable. Uh, a fourth there. Fifth, sixth, seventh. Was there actually a one down here as well? Eighth, yeah. Nine. There's a lot of somewhat terraform. Damn. There's a lot of somewhat terraformable planets here. Um, whether they're worth it or not, especially with it being a very long distance binary, is going to be interesting. We'll rename you. So rename system, and you are the Piffle system. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. <sighs> sorry, I suffer from uh, extreme. Um, Englishness. I, I can only speak English. My my ability to speak other languages is uh, this is not so good. This is this is shizer. Um, yeah, we'll rename you. And I think we're gonna leave the Einstein to have a look around. Now the Einstein is pretty slow. Uh, it's not actually that slow. It's not actually that slow. It's just less than three thousand clubs per second. It's going to take a while to look around all the components inside here, but the binary itself... And there aren't any jump points, uh, not jump points, there aren't any Lagrange points to jump between, so it's going to be a nightmare. Absolute nightmare. Anyway, while that does that, I'm going to cut back and uh, we'll catch you in a, in a second. Or, you know, literally for you it's in a second. For me it might be, you know, several hours or whatever. Okay, so a fair amount of time has passed. Um, we've had a look around... We've actually got the Madrid class now building. If we pull up 
this, you'll notice that we have the Madrid class here. The Madrid, the Cadiz, and the Toledo. They're starting to be built. I've also told the Fuel Harvesters to build another four. I've sent the four we just built, so we're now building the Atlanta, the Cleveland, the Denver, and the Honolulu. That's all going well. But, importantly, the Soul Freighters here have finally finished doing whatever I told them to do like a million years ago, uh, going to outer comets in our Sol system. Uh, so what I'm going to get them to do is I'm going to get them to go to Kavalan and I will get them to take some automated mines because we actually have uh, 89 automated mines sitting on Earth. And I would say not doing much. They're actually, because they're mining, they're mining on Earth. But they aren't needed. Uh, what they're needed is at the Kavalan jump point to go to Moon 15 to go get Corundium. And we would like to unload automated mine and then go to solid jump point, come back, go to Earth, refuel, resupply. There's four of you. Uh, we want to take about 80. So that's going to be 20 trips. So do it 19 more times. That seems reasonable. Going to take them a year. Not, not, sorry, it won't take them a year. It will take them about a billion years. It will take them 10 years to do that. Yeah, the reason that our next freighters had a speed of almost, uh, almost twice as much. Uh, so that's going to take a little while. We also probably need to take a mass driver over there before they're even done. So when the Sol Freighters 2 are done, we'll probably take a mass driver over at the same time we take a few mines over. Um, I think that's probably a good idea. Yeah, cool. So we'll start them doing that. The Kavalan system is slowly getting filled up. We're currently up to half a million people on Kavalan A1. Uh, we'll need someone to take mines over as well. So as soon as we're done taking infrastructure over, we'll start taking mines over. How much infrastructure got on Earth? Um, 3,000. Okay. Excellent. And, of course, our new freight is actually up to six. Do I build more than that? Probably. Are we building more freighters right now? We aren't. I think I want to build more freighters. I didn't think I'd want to build more than six. And also have the old four, but yeah, I think we will. So let's build the Nance. The Lille. The Montpellier. And yeah, that's all we can build for now. So we'll get them building. That allows to ship over a lot more infrastructure or even get a lot more automated mines over. Uh, it's surprising that we need that many this early, but I think the issue is that our civilian economy has been trash because they haven't been building freighters. And at the same time, we've had to do a lot of going to Kavalan that normally you just do, you know, you go to Mars or somewhere, somewhere in this system, somewhere you don't need to worry too much about. So I think we'll zoom in as well. Um, I actually want to see this Kavalan jump point, so we'll stay here. But, again, going to skip forwards. We have a new system! Off Oscar is the Heights system, which we're going to rename. But, oh, I like, wrong one. But the Heights system is actually very interesting. There we go. And stored here, we have rename system. This is actually going to be the Nanon system. Here's the thing, it's a binary. There's nothing around the secondary component, but it is actually a binary. Uh, the luminosity of the first part is only 1.2% the power of the sun and 0.5% for binary B. But both of them are M spectral class, which is interesting. Now here's the thing, Nanon A2, look at that. It has liquid ocean, which covers 91% of the planet. It's got an atmospheric pressure of a third of an atmosphere. It has a nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide atmosphere with a temperature of 25 degrees and a gravity of 1.34. This is livable. For us, the only issue here is that our minimum oxygen pressure has to be 0.1. If we increase the oxygen pressure here to 0.1, I 
I think this would just instantly become livable for us. We might need to increase to 0.1 and then increase the nitrogen to a tiny bit more. But this, this would be livable very, very quickly. Like, this would literally take us a fraction of the amount of time it would be to colonize anywhere else. Because we need to introduce probably about 0 0.7, 0 0.07 atmospheres to make this livable. But here's the issue. This is so close to livable for us that there well could be someone living there already. And remember, in our settings, it was, what, 40%, 45% chance any time we come across a planet that is somewhat livable that there might be someone living there. So we have a roughly 50-50 chance right now that there is somebody here. We won't be able to detect them at this range. We will be able to detect them if we get closer. So, if you would kindly remove all and head in to Nanon A2. It will take you two days. We're going to give ourselves a five-day skip. See what happens. There we are. It's that damn race again. It's the same alien race. Wrong one. The Aron. They might well kill the Maxwell if we're not careful now. We're going to back away. I'll turn our active sensor on just for a second. Uh, run. Run for the jump point, and then look at the inside of a jump point. This could well be a homeworld. It's livable. This could well be their homeworld. We don't know for sure. But, considering we now know they are there, I'm going to line up the Nanon, and I'm going to then save position and controlling race the Aron. Trolling race, the Aron. Oh, no, it's old control. Right, Aron. There we go. Now, we will do a five second jump just so we have our radar on and we can get a fix on these Gwynid class. They're a thousand tons, they're facts. Okay, now we know that the Gwynid class are facts, that means that they're probably very short range. Which means that they probably are based in the system we find them in. Which is worrying, considering we found them in a few places. Uh, we will definitely want to turn that off, because the fact we've got our um, active sensor on is normally a prelude to we're going to fire weapons at you. So, we might live longer, we might live long enough to make it to the jump point. I don't know if that's the case, but we can, we can have a go. Political relations are pretty bad. Not terrible, but pretty damn bad. Hello, strange spider plant penis monster. Uh, hi. We're going to run. And it won't matter. Like, there's no way I can dodge or weave or intercept. If they shoot at us, we're dead. So we're going to do a five-day skip and see if we make it out system. My guess is about 9% chance we won't. We've lost contact with them. Okay. That might happen right before missiles hit. Missiles are gonna impact. Notice that this is 25 second gap. This means that something has stopped for 25 seconds because it requires an action to be taken. That feels like they fired missiles and now they're firing again. Uh, we're gonna see the Maxwell blow up now. Oh god, again? How many missiles are they firing? There we go. We'll try and soldier on under fire, but that's nine missiles coming at us. Notably slower than our missiles, but only just.
and it blew up. Damn. There goes another exploration vessel. 90, 90 survivors. That means 90 more dead very shortly. Uh, there's no way we're going to go find them. But we have more information on the enemy. We now know that they are in three systems, all of which have been reached by different jump points. That's worrying. That means that they are massive or they are literally next door to us and share a lot of jump points. Because we have, I think we set it so that we're quite connected. Uh, actually, no, we didn't because we're using uh, default starting normal names. So the interconnectedness is already predetermined. Uh, if you start off and you don't choose to use realistic stars, you can set the amount of interconnectivity between close related stars. So, you know, if those are close and they have lots of connections, it's likely that these two, which have a connection here, are also going to be close to Empros. Realistic Stars has that already set. If you have a fake one and set it up, you can determine effectively are, you know, James and Wintermute likely to have a connection or are they in fact less likely because they're at the other ends of the Empire. Um, so, yeah, we're going to have to face down that hostile Empire at some point. How's our production missiles going? We need them. Um, actually, not bad. Okay. Now, one of the issues we have is that Kavalin is actually pretty exposed. We should probably work on our ground forces at some point. Hmm. So, uh, we just researched and completed shipbuilding rate, 750 BP. One of the things I did in between was uh, we finished doing the 30% time cost saving. So instead, I started doing another construction production because it's pretty, pretty useful. I think we'll want to focus on some ground combat. Yeah. So, for ground combat. We're going to want to get ourselves drop pods, preferably cryo drop pods. Because right now we don't know where the enemy is, but I'm pretty sure that they have that planet. That is such a nice planet that if they are in that system, they have it. We have a few choices what you can do for, you know, attacking an enemy planet. You can just use troop bays. And what a troop bay is, it's basically a giant hangar, which is, you know, not open to space. It's just a big wide open area. It's like a warehouse. You get your troops to stay in there. There's bunk beds and stuff. When you get to a planet, you land the ship, you slowly get them out, you know, very slowly, like you would get cargo out. But that means you need to wait above an enemy planet. It takes you a long time to disengage your troops. If you have drop pods, you can put people in the drop pod and shoot them down to the planet and it's instant. It's great. But if you only have drop pods, you are literally telling your entire group of people, your battalion, or in some cases a company of men and women, to get inside a drop pod. And then you fly halfway across the galaxy for several days and they are literally in a pod. So normally you need to combine of a troop transport bay. Otherwise their morale starts to drop. Or you can get cryo drop pods, which takes the benefit of our cryo systems and our drop pods. You put them in a drop pod and then you freeze them. Then you fly to an enemy planet, then you fire the drop pod and it unfreezes them in flight. Or maybe just before flight so they can get briefed. But whatever the situation is, um, they effectively, from their perspective, subjectively get into a drop pod. And suddenly they're at the planet and they're at the drop pod and bam, they're doing fighting. Um, so we want those because Frankly, it's not worth dealing with. Oh, I have them in a troop transport bay. I get them out of the troop transport bay. I put them into the drop pod. I fire them at the drop pod. You could just be like, I put you on the cryo drop pod. Bang, you're being fired. So to get that, we will need to get drop pods. And combat drop pod module company. Uh, no, battalion. Company is for smaller. That's for like a company of marines if you want to board an enemy ship, which you can do. Uh, we might do it later on. But for now, we want battalion because everything is battalion side except for uh, marine companies. Everything else is battalion. Some battalions are five times larger than others, but everything is technically a battalion. And we have no one matching, so it's going to be Nathan. I mean, I could train them up. How long would it take to train you up if I give you 30 labs? You would be done April. Ah, that's not bad. 0% bonus. Great. Owen, please learn. Give me a bonus. 
Right now, though, we can't do anything in terms of an offensive action until we have ships. So we're still waiting on that. The new Hastings are relatively close to being done. They're going to be done March. Uh, we'll certainly want to build more than that, though. Mm. Other than that, good carry on. Carry on my wayward son. There'll be peace before we're done. Nuke those aliens to death. Gonna steal their planet. Right. Dirac, how are you doing? You still got a job to do? Excellent. The rest of you are good. Sense of fire control, logistics, ground com... Uh, hello. Georgia Garner has joined my scientific establishment. She has a logistics ground combat of 10%. And Owen was killed. Owen started researching combat drop modules and was killed in an accident. I think we all know what happened. Owen was testing out a combat drop pod and either it got launched and fell on top of him or he was in it and it didn't stop in time. But Owen Sutton was killed in an accident while researching drop pods. That sounds incredibly suspicious. It's also very suspicious that Georgia Garner happens to show up at exactly the right time with a better ground combat score. Hmm, that's very coincidental. It's very coincidental, don't you think? Nonetheless, that's the kind of forward thinking, the kind of genius and tenacity that we look for in the Elysian Empire. Sadly, she can only handle 20 labs, but, you know, we'll try. Um... At least there's 10 labs left. I guess we'll put the 10 labs on something else. No, no, she definitely murdered him. Definitely. I don't mind. Mm. Fusion Bisted Fish and Warhead sounds tempting. Yeah, I think we'll do Fusion Bisted Fish and Warhead. 8,000. Worth it. And I've got 20% bonus, so that's not terrible. Call for the Inquisition. No. She She's better than him. She deserved to usurp him. Okay, carry on. This is, this is a kind of emergent storytelling I like, you know. Naturally, this story just happens. Twitch chat are definitely saying I need to call for the Inquisition. I'm like, no, 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 why would I do that? Okay, we completed our survey of the run and flight system. And the Dirac. Now, I actually would like to check something specific, which is if we refresh here, you notice that Nanon is the enemy system. There's actually another system that comes off of Oscar. I really want to find out what is there. But since we are in run and flight, we should probably check the unexplored jump point. But I really want to see what comes off of Oscar. Because if that is their homeworld, the likelihood from Oscar is that we'll also encounter another system near to Nanon. Um, either way, George Sinclair, shipbuilding, yeah, meh. Either way, I think we're good. How are we doing with that? Terraforming base, 0 0.31, 31% remaining. Excellent. And, okay, we have a new system. And it looks pretty boring. There is nothing here. Right, you are the Richard Harris system. Since there is nothing here, though, I think we will actually get you to come back to Earth. Um, then refuel. Resupply. Yeah, you don't need to be overhauled yet. And then head up through Kavalan, Avidian, Oscar, and then explore Jump Point near Nanon. Because I really all know what is through there. However, we've just built all over the Hastings class. We've built the Bannockburn, the Falkirk, the Stamford Bridge, the Marston Moor. We've completed additional maintenance storage. 
Whoops, I may have researched the wrong thing. Uh, we've also completed terraforming rate. Sweet. Hey, admission of main storage isn't the worst thing to accidentally look at. Um, she hasn't learned anything. Right. I've got 13 labs available. I'll give them to you. Do, 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 do. There we go. Work on that fusion warhead. However, we now have our Hastings class. Welcome to the Empire. Stay shiny. And I accidentally left my uh, subscriber sound effect on <laughs> for recording the YouTube video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a few more Hastings class to be pushed out. Um, if we go to the shipyard. Where's the Hastings? There we go. And we'll probably get... Probably another leader and three more full-on light cruisers as well. Now, I believe we have a list of battles. So, we're going to have the Sterling Bridge. The... Bosworth Field. I only have one left. No, no, I have two left. Towton, because Towton is a pretty major battle that I almost forgot existed, which I'm very sad about. And then, of course, Tewksbury, which again, I almost forgot existed, and I, I hate myself for it. Like, how can I forget these two very important battles? Uh, and I'm going to strike them from the list, so I don't accidentally redo them. There we go. Either way, though, uh, we're going to continue pushing forwards. It'll take a little while to do them. We're looking at May 49. By the time we have those, I think we could probably push through, because we'll also have, likely enough, another set of destroyers. Which would give us enough missile defense that I feel confident we can actually try and attack the enemy. So we'll actually get a chance. Looking like mid-49 to make a push. Ah, no, we need the Madrid's though for their jump engines. Yeah, it's going to be late 49 at earliest. So we're looking at a year and a half until our actual military offensive. And that's if we do, you know, the Madrid's right now. Uh, actually, probably going to put an extra slipway in for you. Um, you can do continual capacity expansion as well. Cool. 30% left on our terraforming base. So that, I think we can probably end this, this episode. Thank you very much for watching. We have discovered another place where the enemy live, which is just great. That's lovely. I, I hadn't found enough places where the Auron were They're kind of omnipresent. A lot of facts. A lot of facts. Luckily, one of our military ships does have a way of detecting fact. Who did we give the fact detection to? Was it the Hastings CC? No. Who did we give the fact detection to? Bring it all back, CC? Yeah. And remember, that's only going to be 30 million kilometers. That's going to be less than the range of our normal missiles. Looking at our command ship. Um, which is the Elizabeth Thirst. Mm, yeah, I don't know what range we're going to see them at. But it's not going to be ideal. Probably 30 million kilometers. That's going to be fun. That's going to be fun indeed. They are a size which we are not best determined to fight, but luckily we did get a sensor that can detect them. So, for now, I've been really seeing like, subscribe. A war is, well, a war is here, but an actual battle is coming rather than just the slaughter of our innocent explorers. Until then, though, like, subscribe. Let me know what you're feeling down below and stay shiny.